Yeah, I thought it would be better to just kind of keep the, you know, do two things at once, sort of introduce my own writer's trajectory, but also talk about how I learned, you know, the sort of things that I learned as I was working in film, for example, mm -hmm. and you know, just sort of relate everything to the personal story. Um, so I hope that's okay. It's an interesting life you got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll show you. I might do some show and tell too. Oh yes, good, good. That'd nice. be fun. Can you see? That's one of the yeah. low budget. That's one of the low budget horror films that I worked on. That was my first. That was my first. Uh, first one, and then Ooh. this is another one. <laughs> nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think <laughs> Right, we're about to start, so All right. let's rock and roll, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, selamat malam semua, selamat malam kawan-kawan dimanapun berada. Selamat datang di acara Satellite Event URF 2021. Terima kasih telah hadir malam ini dalam sesi diskusi bersama Ruth Oseki yang akan dipandu oleh moderator Baginda Muda Bangsa dari Festival Sastra Banggai. Sebelum acara dimulai, saya akan persilahkan Ibu Janet Denif selaku Direktur dari Ubud Writers and Readers Festival serta uh, Leo, perwakilan dari US Embassy, selaku pendukung utama dari acara ini untuk memberikan sepatah dua patah kata. Kepada Ibu Janet, saya persilahkan. Good evening everyone and welcome to our first satellite event. Uh, we're very excited tonight to be presenting Ruth Ozeki who will be talking about her writing life and uh, all sorts of other uh, interesting stories about her um, skills, etc., and uh, her life in general. Uh, very excited about the satellite program in general. Um, as you know, the American Embassy have been supporting this initiative for many years now and it's our way of connecting to some of the remote areas around Indonesia because as we know um, Indonesia has more than 17,000 islands so um, for us uh, this online uh, new technology makes it even more possible to connect with some of these remote areas so uh, really excited to be meeting our friends in Bangai in uh, central Sulawesi and uh, yeah, to be having chats about, um, you know, the work that uh, is exciting for them, et cetera, and also extending to the other wider communities that we've uh, previously visited. So uh, we really love this part of the festival because we get to make new friends around Indonesia and connect with old friends and introduce some of our leading authors. So uh, please uh, enjoy tonight, everybody, and thank you again, Ruth, for appearing tonight. Thank you, Leo and Upi there from the American Embassy. And uh, thank you, Baginda, and our translator as well. So, um, oh, my camera's going out. So, terima kasih, everybody, and uh, have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you, Ibu Janet. Um, now I please Leo to be on stage with us. Thank you very much. Um, and good evening from Jakarta. Uh, my name is Leo Jilk. I'm the Assistant Cultural Affairs Officer at the U.S. Embassy uh, in Jakarta. So I, I manage our amazing cultural programs like this one and also the professional exchanges um, that Indonesians participate in uh, traveling to the United States. So it's a huge pleasure for us to continue collaborating with the Ubud Writers and Readers Festival in 2021 uh, to hold this series of satellite programs. It's our eighth year of working together, and these satellite programs are really the flagship um, element of our collaboration with Ubud to bring um, talented American writers, literary icons, uh, to places outside of Ubud and outside of Jakarta to different parts of Indonesia so that we can meet and share inspiration with different groups and communities. Uh, and though we can't do that in person right now, sadly, 
Uh, we hope that we can use this opportunity to keep sharing with the many diverse communities uh, in Indonesia and meet you again in person uh, as soon as the situation allows. Um, and tonight we have Ruth Ozeki with us, an award-winning author and filmmaker um, whose prose uh, is a unique voice uh, that explores self-reflection and the juxtaposition and intersection of different and sometimes uh, opposing cultures and the conversations that take place between those cultures. Uh, elements uh, that I think we can relate to as Americans and as Indonesians mm -hmm. because we live in diverse multicultural communities. Mm -hmm. um, so it will be wonderful to learn um, from Ruth tonight uh, how perhaps some of her characters are built and perhaps how her personal experience and stories um, are, are related or woven into her literary work uh, and, and the impact of that work. So I hope this will be inspiring for, for young and aspiring writers. Also, Ruth Ozeki is an ordained Zen Buddhist priest. And I read in the list of the many awards that she has won that she was the first Zen Buddhist priest to be shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize. And I thought that probably she's the first Zen Buddhist priest to have won many of the uh, honors <laughs> that she has won. Um, in any case, I, I want to thank the festival again for working with us this year, facilitating this event, and also a couple more thank yous before I uh, finish my time to the festival Sastra Bangai in central Sulawesi, um, to our moderator this evening, Baginda Muda Bangsa, uh, and to our friends from Lombung Mongkorat University, Banjar Masin, South Kalimantan, and also from Sugiya Pranati University in Samarang for joining us. And don't forget to join our future satellite programs on um, poetry next Thursday and on writing political history next Friday. Uh, I hope you'll learn something tonight and most importantly that you have a wonderful time. Uh, ask questions and enjoy the event. Thank you again. Thank you, Leo. Um, baik, tanpa berpanjang-panjang lagi, saya langsung serahkan. Uh, panggung ini kepada Baginda selaku moderator okay. festival cool. Sastra Bangai. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Erma. Well, uh, good evening and good morning, everyone. Um, firstly, I would love to introduce myself. I'm Baginda Muda Bangsa, but please call me Bagin. So, first, I would love to say my gratitude to the Uber Writer Festival for this great opportunity so so for everyone welcome to the satellite program Ubud Writers Leaders Festival in collaboration with US Embassy Festival Sastra Banggai Unika Sugi Japranata and Universitas Lambung Mangkurat so for today uh, we we asked we already have Ruth Ozaki with us so I want I will introduce her short introduction. So Ruth is a novelist and a filmmaker. Ruth also is a, the author of a tale for the time being, which was the which was a finalist for the 2013 Booker Prize. Her nonfiction work includes a memoir, The Face, A Time Code, and the documentary film Halving the Bones. She now also teaches creative writing at Smith College and is affiliated with the Brooklyn Zen Center and the Everyday Zen Foundation. So even we are going to talk and we are going to discuss about her book, uh, The Book of Form and Emptiness. And we are also going to talk about her experience in, in writings, her 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 journey in writing. So maybe without further ado, maybe we can start. I will start asking questions. <laughs> so um, is my voice clear? Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Ruth, uh, as I know, Zen Zen Buddhist, uh, you're a Zen Buddhist, and uh, as I read the title of your 
of your latest books and the impression is your writings were influenced by this Zen Buddhist thing, if I might say. So maybe you can tell us and share a little bit to us about how is your background as a Zen Buddhist influence your writings? Mm -hmm. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about what Okay. Uh, tell me, can you repeat that last little bit? Can you tell us a little, a little bit about what is Zen Buddhist? Ah, I see, I see. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, um, let's see. You know, Zen Buddhism, the, the Zen Buddhism that I practice is um, Japanese Zen. Um, and, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, there's many different kinds of Buddhism, but the, the Buddhism that I practice is Japanese Zen, and, you know, it came from China, and then, you know, before that from India. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's the religion of my, um, my grandparents, not my parents, but my grandparents. Um, my mother is Japanese, and, uh, and, and so, and she, she wasn't a, you know, she wasn't a religious person at all. Um, but my grandfather used to practice Zen Buddhism. And the word Zen um, is really means um, meditation, right? And so the, the foundation of Zen Buddhist practice is a meditation practice. And Ravan Jay, do you, do you want to translate this? Or? Yep. Yeah. Uh, jadi yang saya memiliki itu adalah agama Buddha yang memiliki karakteristik Zen. Zen itu memang uh, yang saya memiliki itu berasal dari Jepang. Dan sebenarnya ibu saya itu berasal dari Jepang juga dan Buddha agama Buddha Zen ini itu berasal dari kakek sama nenek saya dari sisi ibu. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, and so uh, you know I didn't really um, practice much Zen when I was growing up even though I was very interested in meditation um, ever since I was a very little child. Um, but I started getting very serious about uh, about Buddhist practice later on in my life when saat I started saat, yeah, when my parents masa muda, grew old. Yeah. Right. Saat masa muda saya sebenarnya tidak begitu mengikuti ajaran-ajarannya, hanya meditasi saja. Tetapi dengan seiringannya waktu, saya mulai memeluki agama Buddha Zen ini. And I realized when my parents started getting old and um, and sick and were ending, you know, approaching the end of their life. Um, I, I realized suddenly, you know, and this sounds stupid, but I realized that people die. You know, I had this, I had this understanding that all of the people who were closest to me were going to, were going to die. Um, so this is one of the, you know, the, ob this is obvious, right? This is reality. But I think that it only, um, it only really struck me when it was my own family. Tapi saat orang tua saya sudah mulai berusia tua, dan saya baru sadar bahwa sebenarnya kematian itu hal yang wajar dan hal yang walaupun ini hal yang sangat wajar saat ini terjadi kepada keluarga atau lingkup saya sendiri baru saya baru merasa bahwa sesungguhnya kematian itu sesuatu yang menjadi kenyataan dunia ini. And and so this experience of losing a parent is what um, uh, sort of set me on the Buddhist path. It's also what um, it is the starting point for my new novel, um, The Book of Form and Emptiness, um, which is, you know, the, in the first couple of pages, um, a young boy, a 12-year-old boy, loses his father. Dan untuk kehilangan dari orang tua ini, mulai dari sanalah perjalanan saya, perjalanan spiritual saya, dan di sanalah di buku, saya juga menulis bukunya, The Book of Form and Emptiness, atau dalam bahasa Indonesia, Buku Rupa dan Kekosongan, dan ceritanya di dalam novel itu juga sama bahwa ada seorang anak yang kehilangan dari orang tuanya. And and so um, bugging you asked about um, you know how Zen influences my books um, yes, yeah. and my writing. I think that um, you know the some of the principal you know foundational teachings of Zen hmm. um, you can see in all literature, right? Yeah, in yeah. all in all literature, things like impermanence, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. suffering, right? Suffering, yes. we all suffer, right? Um, yes. And then you know the way that we're all connected to each other, you know that that mm -hmm. everything is about relationship, right? Um, and these kinds of Zen principles, I think, fill yeah. my books 
but they also fill all of literature, right? Um, beberapa prinsip-prinsip Zen yang sebenarnya ada di buku saya itu sama di semua literatur juga. Seperti kefanaan dan juga duka dan hal-hal seperti itu adalah realita yang sebenarnya ada di semua jenis literatur. Bukan hanya di buku saya saja yang berpengaruhi Zen. So the, the, the book of Form and Emptiness is about a, a young boy who finds a community of, of writers and readers. <laughs> he, he, you know, he finds... Um, He finds a uh, well. He starts to hear. He starts to hear voices, right? He's he in his grief. He starts to hear voices, and um, and at first this is very disturbing to him. But um, eventually he he finds um, uh, refuge in a large public I'm library, right? right? Yeah. And so you know, it's the story of him finding a community of of you know people who um, are involved with language, who are involved yeah. with literature, right, to help him. Cerita The Book of Form and Emptiness atau buku, buku rupa dan kekosongan ini menceritakan tentang uh, anak kecil ini yang baru dapat komunitas para um, para penulis dan juga para pembaca atau atau komunitas literatur ini. Dan dari komunitas literatur ini, dia baru memulai mendapatkan dukungan untuk membantu dia dalam perjalanan dia sendiri dari kehilangannya orang tuanya itu. Dan dari uh, bantuannya sebuah komunitas literatur itu, dan dari bantuannya uh, pustaka atau, atau tempat belajar buku seperti itu, dia baru mendapatkan uh, ketenangan hati untuk um, sabar dan mengerti situasinya. Oke, yeah. oke. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, so, I mean, uh, I haven't finished reading your your books, but I I found it really intriguing. Uh, not only your your latest book, but 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 a tale of of the time being. I find it really interesting. I watched a video of you in your. I watched a video of you in the YouTube. You are telling telling. You are reading. This, you read the stories, and I love the way you delivered the stories. I also love the way you open the books. You, you read several pages of the books, and I found it like, wow, that, <laughs> that blows my mind. So my, my question is, how 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 the inspiration where where the inspiration came? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. How the creative yeah. process behind it? Yeah, sure, sure. <clears throat> well, um. Yeah, inspiration is a is a funny thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I think for me, uh, the inspiration is always in you know, it's it's just it's sort of everywhere in the world around me, right? It and a lot of the inspiration for my work comes from um, you know comes from my past. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Untuk saya inspirasinya itu dari mana-mana, tapi um, tentu saja kebanyakannya itu dari cerita saya sendiri. So, for example, um, you know, I'll talk about the book of form and emptiness, right? The young boy, his name is Benny, okay, and his father dies, and after his father dies, he hears his father's voice talking to him, right, calling his name. Sebagai contoh untuk buku ini, uh, The Book of Form and Emptiness, ada uh, seorang anak laki-laki yang bernama Benny, dan di sanalah dia mulai mendengar suara dari bapaknya yang sudah meninggal. Yeah. And and um, and then after this, right, um, he starts to hear the voices of not just his father, but also the voices of um, the things, the objects around him, talking to him. Right. Selain suara bapaknya saja, selain bapak, uh, selain suara dari bapaknya, ia juga mendengar suara dari benda-benda di sekitarnya. Yeah. And this is a problem for him because his mother is a bit of a hoarder, right? She collects things. Nah, ini menjadi masalah buat si Benny ini karena ibunya juga suka mengkoleksi banyak barang-barang. 
Yeah. And so Benny's house is, a, is filled with objects, filled with things, right? And it's a very noisy place because he's hearing the voices of all these things around him. Jadi rumah Beninya ini menjadi tempat yang sangat susah karena banyak suara-suara yang terdengar dari banyak barang-barang ini. Menjadi uh, tempat yang sangat berisik. Yeah. And so the inspiration for this, I think, once again, the seeds for this came from my own life, my own experience. Um, after my father died, for about a year after he died, I would hear his voice calling my name. Beni atau inspirasi dari cerita ini itu dari pengalaman pribadi saya. Saat bapak saya meninggal, saya juga mendengar suara bapak saya sendiri. Yeah. I'd be doing something really simple like folding the laundry or, you know, washing the dishes and behind me, it was always behind me and sort of to the right, you know, I would hear him clear his voice, I clear his throat and then say my name, say Ruth, you know, and every time this happened, I would look around, you know, expecting to see him. And then he, you know, he, he, I couldn't see him. And then I would remember, oh, he, he's, he's dead. And I would feel this pang of grief and, and loss again. Yeah. Setiap kali saya sedang melakukan sesuatu di, di rumah, misalnya lagi cuci piring atau apa, saya selalu mendengar di belakang saya di bagian kanan, ada suara bapak saya memanggil nama saya. Dan saya selalu melihat ke belakang dan ingin melihat bapak saya, tetapi saya baru menyadar bahwa dia sudah tidak ada. Dan di sanalah saya menderita dengan kekosongan itu dan tanpa bapak saya. And, and so this was, you know, this was very surprising to me. I didn't understand it because I was hearing the voice with my ear and, and he wasn't there. But then I realized I was, I was thinking about the creative process. And I was thinking about how um, characters, you know, fictional characters also come to me as voices, right? You wanna... Ini hal yang sangat aneh karena saya memikir bahwa ya ini hal yang sangat tidak wajar tetapi saya memikir kembali tentang proses kreatif dan biasanya dalam proses kreatif saya uh, karakter-karakter fiksional atau yang saya buat itu saya juga mendengar suaranya. And I was doing an event at um, a library talking to you know a group of readers about um, a tale for the time being and I was explaining how the character now right the character's voice came to me first yeah. right i heard her voice right and when i was explaining this somebody in the audience raised his hand and asked me if i heard her voice with my ear or was it you know as if it were outside or was it more inside mm-hmm. like i heard her voice with my mind right do you want to say Saya sedang ada acara di sebuah beda buku untuk buku saya A Tale for the Time Being dan di sana ada satu karakter yang bernama Mau yang awalnya saya juga hanya mendengar suaranya saja dari saya mendengar suaranya baru saya mulai menulis bukunya atau karyanya ini dan di sanalah ada satu pertanyaan dari salah satu pengunjung acaranya ini dan ia bertanya apakah suara maunya ini didengar oleh telinga atau didengar dalam pikiran And and so I explained to him that with fictional characters, you know, it was more that I heard it inside with my mind. I heard the voice inside with my mind. Um, And this man's son, the man told me that his son heard voices as if they were on the outside. And these voices were very disturbing to him. They were very mean, you know, sort of angry, cruel voices, um, always criticizing him. And so the, the boy was very disturbed by this, right? Um, and, and I was thinking too about how I have those voices. I have those criti- critical voices inside me too. I think most writers and most artists, most people, right? Have these internalized voices of, you know, the inner critic always telling, you know, my voices are always telling me that whatever it is that I'm writing is bad. Right. And nobody wants to hear it. Right. Dan uh, saya sih um, ceritakan dan memberikan penjelasan di mana biasanya dalam proses pembuatan sebuah uh, karakter fiktif atau karakter kayali biasanya itu dalam pemikiran saja. 
Tetapi uh, anak dari dari pengunjung acara ini juga bertanya bahwa ia juga biasanya mendengarkan suara-suara, tapi bukan saja dalam pikirannya, tapi sepertinya se- seperti sesuatu yang di luar dirinya sendiri. Dan suaranya itu biasanya unsurnya negatif, uh, selalu menjatuhkan dirinya dan selalu tidak memberikan inspirasi kepadanya. Lalu di sini saya juga mengerti bahwa saya sendiri juga memiliki suara-suara seperti itu. Suara-suara yang tidak membantu saya, suara-suara yang biasanya memberikan saya dorongan negatif dari dari luar dari luar saya sendiri. Dan uh, saya juga baru merasa bahwa sepertinya semua orang, bukan saya sendiri saja, tapi semua, man, semua, semua manusia, ada juga suara-suara seperti ini dari luar yang memberikan kita dorongan-dorongan negatif. So there's all these different kinds of voices, you know, there's the voices of inspiration, there's the kind of neurotic voices that we hear, and then there are these other voices that we hear, you know, that some people hear as if they're outside your head, right? But there's many different kinds. And this is the area that I, I was thinking about, voices, right? And I wanted to explore this um, in, in this novel. Jadi ada suara yang memberikan kita inspirasi, ada suara-suara yang hanya sibuk sendiri dalam pikiran, dan juga ada suara-suara yang di luar pikiran kita. Tapi saya ingin mengeksplorasi lebih lanjut mengenai suara-suara ini dan ingin bertulis dan berkarya dari inspirasi ini. And and I also last the last thing I'll say is that um, in this novel objects speak, right? Objects, yeah. things have voices too. Yeah. Dan dalam novel ini Uh, benda-benda juga bersuara dan mereka juga mempunyai suara sendiri. And and this too was something that um, I thought of when I was cleaning out my parents' house and their house was filled with things, you know. And hal I ini juga this... hal ini juga saya mikirkan waktu saya sedang bersihkan uh, uh, rumah orang tua saya, mereka juga punya banyak barang. And and it was very difficult to throw things away because I loved my parents and these were their objects. And I felt that my parents were in the objects and I felt that all of the objects had stories in them. And I just, you know, I kept wishing that the objects could speak to me and tell me their stories. Susah banget untuk uh, mengambil keputusan mengenai membuangkan barang-barang itu karena walaupun itu hanya benda atau objek, sepertinya semuanya punya cerita dan semuanya punya kenangan-kenangan dari orang tua saya dan saya sangat um, berharap pada saat itu bahwa benda-benda ini bisa bicara kepada saya mengenai cerita mereka dan sudut pandang mereka tentang orang tua saya. Yeah. And and so that's where the you know you ask about inspiration. The inspiration comes from all of these different areas, you know, it comes from, you know, but but most of it is somehow, you know, it's the things, it's the ideas that I'm thinking about, it's, you know, it's cleaning out my parents' house, it's, you know, um, uh, you know, talking, talking to readers, you know, at a, at a library, you know, um, you know, and then, you know, my own, um, my own experience of, you know, of loss. Right of loss and um, grieving someone who I love. Jadi kalau ditanyakan inspirasi datang dari mana ya tentu saja dari mana-mana. Bahkan dari dari uh, benda-benda juga di rumah saya, juga dari pengalaman pribadi saya dengan keluarga saya dan kehilangannya, juga dari perbincangan saya dengan uh, para penulis lainnya. Dan inspirasi ini datangnya dari mana-mana. Oke. Okay. It's a really interesting story, actually, because because that that that's that's what I think when when I listen to your videos in YouTube and you say that the characters was talking to you, is it really talking to you or it's just the way how Ruth delivers the story? But that's real. It's a real thing that the, the characters talking to you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's it's both real and also. You know, it, it it it's it's real to me. You know, oh, and okay. and my job as a novelist is to make it real to you, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my job yeah. as a novelist to yeah, make yeah. to make these voices that are inside my head. You know, these characters mm-hmm. who are inside my head. You know, you don't know about them. Nobody knows about them. It's an unshared experience until I share it, right? And so then, my job as a novelist is to somehow. Take these characters from my head yeah. and put them inside your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
and I think it. I think that you are success with that. <laughs> yes. uh, well, it's, it's my next question. Um, I mean, some of our friends in Bangai is uh, aspired writers. I guess. Good. Um, and Good. as uh, aspired writers, sometimes we found it a bit difficult when you want to put a lot of informations in our writings, right? In, a lot of ideas, complex ideas, and we want to connect every ideas to make make it more sensible to the to the readers. But sometimes we get things, we get lost in our writings. I mean, we don't know. I don't know. I think it's suddenly getting boring. <laughs> I, I don't. Know. What what about you? I mean, your writings. I mean, it's. It's a complex concept. I mean, about time, about the presence, and things like that. Yeah. yeah. What is it for you? The experience. Have you ever felt also that way? I mean, get lost in your <laughs> writings. <laughs> That's my whole life. <laughs> you just described my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. No, it. It's. Um. I. I write. I do write complicated books. I. I know that. I write books that are. Um, very, you know, they have lots of different layers, you know, um, and, and lots of different ideas. Um, there, you know, there are conceptual ideas as well. There's philosophical ideas. You wanna... yeah. uh, saya menulis buku-buku mengenai topik-topik yang sangat sulit. Ada beberapa lapisan dan ide, ada yang konseptual, ada yang juga, ada juga yang berdasarkan filsafat ilmu. I have, you know, there's environmental, you know, there's always environmental themes in my work. Um, there's very often political themes in my work. Ada tentang environment juga, ada juga mengenai politik. Yeah. I was writing one, my second novel, All Over Creation, um, was set on a potato farm, right? And, um, and it was about you know, it was about potato farmers. And so there was a lot of information in there about potato breeding, right? And different, and genetic engineering. Uh, salah satu novel saya yang berjudul All About Creation, itu uh, settingnya di perkebunan kentang. Dan uh, buku itu memang juga menceritakan banyak hal tentang cara untuk um, numbuhkan kentang dan juga tentang um, cara un- dan teknik-teknik um, dari perkebunan kentang itu sendiri. Yeah. And I had to, I had to go to, um, you know, a potato growing area in the United States. And I learned all about potato breeding and, you know, potato farming. And I put all of this into the book. Sampai saya sendiri juga harus ke tempat di Amerika Serikat yang memang ada banyak perkebunan kentang itu. Dan saya harus belajar sendiri caranya untuk berkebun dengan kentang itu, caranya untuk menghasilkan um, spesies atau variasi-variasi baru, dan semua pengetahuan itu saya harus masukin dalam buku saya. And so the manuscript, when I turned it into my editor, was 900 pages. Pada awalnya manuskripnya itu sekitar 900 halaman. <laughs> And my editor looked at it, you know, like... This much pages, right? And she looked at it and and she said, "No." <laughs> she said, "She said your readers do not know, do not need to know everything about potato breeding." Editornya langsung melihat buku yang sangat uh, manuskrip yang sangat tebal itu dan langsung uh, berkata kepada Ruth, um, "Iya, um, pembacamu seharusnya tidak uh, tidak butuh tahu banyak hal tentang tentang." But to me, it was interesting, you know? To me, it was so interesting. It was so important, right? It was so interesting. So, so I guess, you know, the, the, the lesson I learned here was that um, even, if it's, even if it's interesting to you, you know, as the writer, and, and good if it's interesting to you, it should be. You should be, you know, you should be passionate and obsessed about your topic. That's good, right? But your reader doesn't have to know it all, you know? Bagi saya itu ya hanya sangat menarik ilmu tentang kentang itu dan yang saya tuliskan itu sangat menarik. Tapi uh, para pembacanya mungkin tidak uh, tidak terlalu tertarik juga. Jadi kita juga harus memikirkan tentang pembacanya. And so I edited that manuscript down to about 550 pages. I probably edited, you know, two, three hundred pages out of it. Yeah. 
lalu saya mengedit sampai sekitar 550 halaman jadi ya sisanya ya saya mengedit uh, kena dan saya akhirnya hanya 500-an halaman yeah. and and the complexity is still there it's just not all the details are there mm -hmm. right Kompleksitasnya masih sama, tapi mungkin tidak ada banyak detail-detail yang yang terlalu mendalam. And and so there's this expression which you know which we have. Um, it's called we use it in the in the film world, but also in the in the um, the writing world, which is kill your darlings, right? You have to learn to kill your darlings, right? You kill, you have to learn to get rid of the things that you're really attached to that you love, but You know, it, if it doesn't serve the, if it doesn't serve the plot, if it doesn't serve the, you know, to move the story forward, then, you know, probably best to think about editing it out. Yeah. Biasanya dalam industri pembuatan film atau juga dalam penulis ada kata kill your darlings yang berarti ya kadang-kadang kita juga harus mengabaikan apa yang kita cintai demi. Um, demi karyanya itu dapat diterima oleh para pemba oleh oleh para pembaca atau para, para audiens kita. Yeah. I used to work for television, you know. I, I before I was a writer, um, I worked for TV, and um, I worked uh, first as a producer, but later as um, a director and an editor, and I learned how to tell stories in the editing room. That was the that was really where I received my training in storytelling. Yeah. Dulunya saya juga bekerja di industri uh, televisi. Awalnya saya produser, lalu saya menjadi direktur, dan pada akhirnya saya menjadi editor. Pada tahap menjadi editor ini, di sinilah saya um, sesungguhnya belajar uh, cara untuk bercerita dengan baik. Yeah, television is a very um, television is very expensive. Right, it's a very expensive medium, and also TV viewers have a very short attention span, right? And it's very easy to change channels. So, in television, you have to grab your reader—I mean, not your reader, your viewer—you know, really quickly, right? And bring them in and hold them, right? And and so that is, you know, learning how to start a story, you know, and then learning how to keep a story moving quickly. Right is, I think, one of the most valuable lessons that I learned in television. Yeah. TV adalah media yang sangat menuntut karena waktu tayangannya mahal dan uh, rantang perhatian pemirsanya juga pendek. Jadi uh, belajar dengan membaik bagaimana untuk memulai cerita dan juga untuk um, memastikan bahwa para penontonnya juga suka ceritanya dan akan selalu di sana dengan ceritanya itu sesuatu hal yang sangat sulit bagi saya. Yeah. So that's the most important thing I think is is you know keep this keep the main story moving quickly and then you can do little you know you can go and do asides you can have you know asides you can have you know sort of philosophical wanderings you can put in other kinds of information about potatoes as long as the the characters are doing what they need to do you know yeah. they're moving forward. <laughs> Biarkanlah ceritanya berjalan dengan baik. Kalau memang ada tambahan-tambahan lainnya, seperti ide atau informasi yang lain, seperti di, di novel saya mengenai kentang, ya tidak apa-apa. Tapi biarkanlah ceritanya berjalan. Oke, oke, oke. I mean, it's really. I mean, you are as, as a as a writer, you are so. You have this attachment. To your writings, right? So it's quite hard. I, to, yeah. I know <laughs> it's, it's really it's hard. hard. <laughs> so you have to select which one that you want to take out from your writings. I mean, okay, okay but here, here, here's something. Okay, yeah, okay. Take it out, take it out, and put it in a file in mm -hmm. your computer and okay. label it neatly so you know where it is, right? And and don't throw it away. Just hold on to it. Right, and and I'll tell you why. Okay, in a tale for the time being, the first version of a tale for the time being was completely different than the one that you read. Okay, okay. the Ruth, Ruth and Oliver characters were not in the book. That whole half of the book didn't exist. Instead, there were characters who lived in a library. Okay, and and so there were. 
Anyway, so I had to, various things happened and I had to change this. And so I, I took the book and threw out, you know, edited out half of the book. Okay. <laughs> and I put that half of a book in a folder in my hard drive. Right. And then finished writing a tale for the time being. Right. And then, um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Sanjay. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Raven Jay. Yeah. Jika ada bagian yang mungkin tidak cocok dalam naskahnya, ya, itu jangan dibuang, dikeluarin aja dari uh, dari manuskripnya, lalu disimpan dulu di file di komputer Anda. Um, disimpan untuk nanti, misalnya um, dalam pengalaman pribadi saya untuk tell for the time being, uh, versi pertamanya itu sangat berbeda dari versi yang sudah uh, sudah resmi sekarang ini. Ada karakter Ruth dan Oliver yang awalnya itu uh, tidak ada, dan uh, sekarang ada karakter-karakter yang tinggal di perpustakaan. Uh, jadi intinya bahwa saya harus mengedit semuanya, buang setengahnya, lalu saya simpan, tapi itu juga sangat berguna. And so that 300 pages lived in my hard drive for several years, and those characters, you know, and that setting of the library um, wouldn't go away. It's like they were waiting for a book of their own, right? And so that's what turned into um, the new book, the book of form and emptiness. Right, the the library, the characters yeah, yeah, in the library, yeah. all of those were refugees from <laughs> a tale for the time being, right? But they just waited around uh, okay. long enough yes. until I could yeah. make a make a world for them. So nothing is wasted. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sekitar tiga ratus halaman dari um, versi yang pertama itu saya simpan di komputer saya dan untuk bertahun-tahun memang hanya hidup di sana saja. Lalu dari sana lah saya membuat buku The Book of Form and Emptiness dan barulah di sana bagian 300 halaman itu berguna dan dijadikan buku untuk sendirinya. Oke, oke, oke. So so so, just, so don't throw it away. Exactly. Just keep it, keep it. Hold it. Yeah. Hold it and and you'll find a time. That's right. That's right. When the time okay. is ready, when the time, when is, the ready, time is ready. And, you know, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, uh, Ruth, there's there are several questions from oh, the good, participants. Good, good. Uh, I, good. I, I read it for you. So, okay. so here's one of the questions. Uh, the question: How do you write a master? How do you write a masterpiece? Like, how was your thinking process? How can you keep the and and how can you keep to be persistent? As a, I keep facing writer block until I think it's unavoidable. Yeah. Please. <laughs> What a great question. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> I think that writers need a lot of patience, you know, mm -hmm. and it helps if you're a little bit obsessive, right? If, if you can, if you can develop a, a, a kind of obsession about your mm -hmm. story, you know, um, that helps. Um, Seorang penulis itu sesungguhnya harus menjadi orang yang sabar dan kadang-kadang juga sangat pembantu kalau uh, seorang penulis itu juga sangat obsesif mengenai topik yang dia akan menulis. And and the other thing is don't think about publication. You know, don't 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 worry about publication. You know, the most important thing when you're writing is just to write. You know, to find the you know, to find the you know, to find the story. That, that's your only obligation and everything else you can just forget about. Tidak usah banyak memikir tentang proses publikasinya, hanya uh, berfokus terhadap karyanya, bertulislah dan lihat kepada ceritanya. Fokus saja hanya dengan ceritanya saja. Yeah. Now, I've found in my life that nobody is as interested in my writing as I am. Dari pengalaman pribadi saya, tidak ada orang yang tertarik dengan karya saya selain saya sendiri. I also find that when I try to talk about my my writing to other people, somehow it's less important for me to write because I've already talked about it, right? Dan saya, saat saya bercerita kepada orang lain tentang cerita saya, saya merasa bahwa ya tidak begitu penting lagi untuk saya menulis karena saya sudah menceritakannya. So I don't talk about my um, my work in progress. <clears throat> I don't talk about the novels that I'm working on currently, right? Because they lose energy that way. Jadi biasanya uh, dalam proses saya menulis sebuah karya, saya tidak pernah menceritakan um, 
karya saya ini kepada orang lain. Instead, what I do is I have, um, it's called a process journal. Okay. Apa yang saya simpan adalah proses jurnal atau jurnal kayak buku catatan mengenai proses saya. Yeah. And my process journal is the process journal is like my friend, okay? And but it's also it's my friend, it's my teacher, it's my companion, right? It's my colleague, um, it's my confessor, right? And what I do is. The process journal is where I write about whatever it is that I'm writing, right? I write about my process in my process journal. Buku catatan ini seperti teman atau seperti guru, uh, sebuah wadah untuk saya menceritakan segala proses saya ini. And my process journal never gets bored with my ideas. Amazing. Dan proses jurnal saya ini tidak pernah terbosankan dari cerita saya atau dari proses saya. My process journal is always interested, really interested in what I'm doing, right? Proses jurnal saya ini selalu tertarik dengan proses saya dan tentang kegiatan saya. And I have a conversation with my journal. So, for example, um, when I'm in the middle of writing a, a you know, a novel, um, at the end of every writing session, I'll spend a little time with my process journal, thinking about um, what I still need to do. Like what, what questions do I have? You know, for example, like how do I end this scene? How do I end this scene, right? And so I ask that question in my journal, how do I end this scene? And then I think of answers. I brainstorm answers and write all of the answers down, right? Biasanya yang saya lakukan adalah saya bertanya dan uh, ada percakapan dengan proses jurnal saya ini. Pertanyaan-pertanyaannya ya sebagai contoh bagaimana cara untuk mengakhiri bagian dari tulisan saya ini atau dari uh, dari scene ini. Dan dari sanalah saya berinovasi dan melihat dan menjawab pertanyaan saya sendiri di proses jurnal ini agar membantu proses penulisan saya. And, and then I go to sleep and then I wake up in the morning and usually the answer will have come to me. You know, just the act of writing the question, of, of taking the question seriously and writing it down in the process journal, invites an answer to come from my, you know, from my subconscious or wherever these answers come from, right? Um, the answer sort of, you know, having this conversation with the journal helps the answer appear. Kalau kadang-kadang tidak ada jawaban dari pertanyaan saya ini, saya tinggal tidur saja dan esok harinya saya kembali lagi kepada proses jurnal saya dan tiba-tiba dari mana pula ya pertanyaan, uh, pertanyaan dari jawaban saya itu muncul dan saya menulisnya kembali. Yeah. In the process journal, I also complain, right? I also complain about about my characters, right? Um, I, uh, you know, I um, talk about my fears. Like what you know, what I'm what I'm afraid of, right? Um, sometimes I, I I give myself homework assignments. That's really important. Um, I give myself homework assignments, things to research, things to think about, right? Um, so you know, this is what I mean. The process journal is many things to me. Selain itu, saya juga mengeluh di jurnal saya. Saya juga menuliskan ketakutan saya seperti apa dan yang paling um, penting saya memberikan tugas atau PR kepada saya sendiri kadang-kadang untuk riset atau cari tahu lebih lanjut mengenai topik tertentu. Jadi uh, segala ini saya tulis dalam proses jurnal saya. But the most important thing um, and and this uh, this college our, our questioner the college student um, says that they keep facing writer's block, right? And um, the process journal will help you with writer's block because you know it's It's a place that you can go to first thing when you sit down to write. You can open up your process journal and you can just write a little bit. Write, write about your writer's block or, you know, ask a question about your novel and start to brainstorm answers. It just gives you some place to start that's not the blank page. And before you know it, you'll start to have ideas about your project. And then you can start, you can put your journal aside and then you can start working on whatever, you know, your novel, your masterpiece. <laughs> Dan yang paling penting di sini, jika mengalami writer's block atau ketakutan menulis ini, proses jurnalnya akan sangat membantu. Di sanalah menulis mengenai ketakutan menulis Anda. Dan barulah di sana um, mendapatkan semangatnya kembali untuk menulis karyanya. 
Okay, okay. So journaling your writing process is helpful, right? Yeah, it's 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 really I've have done it since I've done it for 25 years wow. now. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> uh okay we have oh uh, wow i have questions for you okay <laughs> well okay uh this question from virus almira zahra in it in a tale for the time being how did you i don't know how did you integrate the concept of environmental env the environmental concept in your writings ah um well i think that um in A Tale for the Time Being, um, you know, A Tale for the Time Being ended up being about the earthquake and tsunami. You know, mm -hmm. that, was a, that was a big event. Not, it's not mm -hmm. about that, but it's a big event in, mm -hmm. in that book. And so it was about the, you know, the tsunami, it was about the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. And I've always been um, very concerned about environmental degradation and, you know, about, uh, you know, plastic pollution in the ocean. Um, and so, you know, it, it seemed to me to be important to talk about these things in, you know, in this book. Um, also, because it, you know, because of the earthquake and the tsunami and the, um, you know, the nuclear meltdown, um, mm -hmm. you know, was at the heart of the book. I also thought it was important to talk about the leaking radiation, you know, mm -hmm. radioactive um, mm -hmm. outflow from Fukushima. Right. And so I think that these things just entered the book naturally. You know, it's not like I thought that I should put them in, but it's more mm -hmm. that, oh, the book is, a you know, the book is about this diary that's connecting two women on other sides of the ocean. And the, the diary has actually floated across somehow, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and and so from that premise, I started thinking about the environmental impact. Right. So it was secondary, but it was really important. Mm -hmm. Well, dalam dalam tulisan um, time uh, for time being ini, ya tentu saja topiknya tentang lingkungan karena ada aspek gempa bumi dan tsunami. Tapi sebenarnya saya berpikir tentang tentang laut dan polusi plastik yang ada di lautan dan juga karena gempa ini ya ada kancuran nuklir dan radiasi dari Fukushima dan semuanya berdampakan kepada laut. Jadi ceritanya ya langsung ada terkaitan dengan lingkungan. Cerita tentang dua wanita ini di dua sisi lautan ini. Uh, yang menceritakan mengenai isu-isu lingkungan ini. Jadi ling isu lingkungan itu menjadi hal yang sekunder sebenarnya. Hmm. Oh. Uh. Uh. oh, let's move to the next question. <laughs> okay, yeah, go. So this question from Aldrich Benedictus. Uh, so he asked about uh, what uh he asked about your motivations in itself outside of the general patience towards writing mm -hmm. as in what kind of mental space that you bring into writing these novels with its varying degrees of concepts ideas or even philosophy uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. i like that i like your phrase mental space um, because that's what a fictional world is. It's a mental space, right? Um, and so I think that, um, you know, for me, writing is a, um, well, okay, let me back up. This comes back to the connection between Buddhism and writing right? Mm -hmm. the, the connection between my Zen practice and my writing practice. Mm -hmm. And um, in meditation, right, in Zen meditation, um, you, you know, you're, you're sitting and you're trying to stay present, not just in a mental space, but also in a physical space in your body, right? Mm -hmm. So it's both body and mind together, all, all one thing, body, mind, right? And you're, you're just trying to stay present to what is now. Okay. Okay. You want to try to answer that? Uh, saya sangat suka tentang kon dengan konsep mental space atau ruangan mental ini yang sesungguhnya dibutuhkan dalam menulis sebuah karya fiksi. Uh, kembali lagi kepada hubungan Zen uh, saya dengan, uh, dengan proses saya menulis. 
dalam um, kepercayaan Zen ini, meditasi itu adalah um, usaha untuk berada di satu tempat dan untuk uh, merasa nyaman dalam tubuh kita sendiri, merasa nyaman dengan keadaan kita pada saat ini. Mm-hmm. And and so I try to bring that same I try to inhabit that same space when I'm writing. You know, I try to I try to, you know, both be fully in my body with my mind wide open, right? When I'm writing. Saya berusaha untuk membawa kekusukan meditasi saya itu saat saya menulis. Yeah. Untuk um, berada di um, untuk berada pada situasi itu dan untuk nyaman dengan situasi yang ada saat itu saat saya menulis. And if you meditate, you'll understand this, but while you're meditating, um, thoughts arise, you know, thoughts arise, and they can be very um, random, you know, they can be very random, um, yeah, just kind of random thoughts that are almost arising from your unconscious, right? Jika Anda meditasi, pasti sudah berpengalaman dengan pikiran-pikiran yang muncul, yang tidak ada kaitannya sama sekali. Jadi pikiran-pikiran ini muncul dari, dari mana, saya tidak tahu, tapi mereka, mereka muncul saat meditasi. Yeah. And and you know when you're meditating you don't get in the way of those thoughts. You don't grab onto them, but you don't try to suppress them either. Right. Dalam proses meditasi ini, uh, kamu tidak menahan agar tidak ada uh, pikiran-pikiran uh, itu dan juga di saat yang sama kita tidak um, saya juga berusaha untuk tidak memikirkan topik-topik itu. Mereka hanya muncul saja dan dan dalam proses meditasi kami membiarkanlah topik-topik itu berada. And so I think it's the same with writing that you know that I what I try to cultivate is a mental space that's wide open right and mm-hmm. and relaxed just a very mm-hmm. wide open relaxed mental space where ideas can kind of come to me and I I do think it's a little bit like dreaming right there's a kind of dreaming aspect to this right my unconscious is is you know allowing these images to rise into my mind right and and those are what i use when i'm writing you know menulis itu sama seperti meditasi di mana ada ide-ide yang muncul seperti mimpi dalam alam bawah sadar dan dari sanalah saya menggunakan itu dalam proses saya bernulis atau berkreasi yeah, yeah. um and i try not to get in my own way <laughs> Dan uh, yang paling penting itu, ya saya uh, tidak memberikan uh, hambatan kepada diri saya sendiri. Because, you know, as writers, you know, we think we have a lot of control, you know. It's like, you know, I'm the writer. I get to I get to be in control here, right? And and I have this great idea, and I'm going to make my characters do this, this, and this. And this is going to be fantastic, right? But that's not necessarily the best way to approach it. Uh, kadang-kadang sebagai penulis kita berasa bahwa kita adalah pengendali bahwa kita akan memastikan bahwa karakter saya itu um, harus melakukan hal ini dan atau hal itu tapi itu bukan cara yang baik. Yeah. Characters have their own ideas, you know, and books have their own ideas. And so I think that trying to cultivate a relaxed, open, receptive mental state is allowing the characters to you know, emerge in the way that they want to emerge and allowing the book to emerge in the way that it wants to emerge. Karakter dan buku itu punya ide mereka sendiri. Jadi kita harus menerima dan membiarkanlah cerita itu berkembang dengan diri sendirinya. And sometimes you have to, you know, sometimes you have to say no, 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 you know, and, and you know, sort of, um, they're like children, right? So sometimes children are, you know, crazy and they go off and do things that are not useful, right? And so, you know, sometimes you have to kind of direct them. And and that's that's kind of like the editorial process, right? Is the is directing and, you know, finding a good structure that works and, you know, uh, so that's important too. But you're talking about the mental state, you know, what I start with is this kind of open receptive, you know, mental state. Um, and, and then work from there. Kadang-kadang kita juga harus mengambil kendalinya lagi. Karakter-karakter itu seperti anak yang kadang-kadang bandel dan dalam proses editorial ini kita harus mengendalikan ceritanya lagi. 
Tapi kalau dibicarakan uh, keadaan mental dalam berkarya, ya tentu saja kita harus sangat terbuka dan harus sangat reseptif kepada ceritanya sendiri dan karakter-karakter yang berkembang di sana. Yeah. And and I'll go back to the process journal here. You know, it's very effective for me. I find it very useful um, to just sit and write in my process journal in a very free associative way. You know, just allowing ideas. You know, oh, that reminds me of this, and you know, and um, and what if this happens? And oh, that's you know, this is a in, this is something interesting, and you know, just it, it's not beautiful prose. But it's just mm-hmm. trying to allow my mind to kind of free associate on the page, and and that's a kind of you know writing meditation in a way, you know, just allowing the the ideas and thoughts to come, and then you know once it, once it's once you've explored that, then the ideas kind of can find their way into the book. Mm-hmm. Kembali lagi ke proses jurnalnya di sana kadang-kadang saya juga menulis secara terbuka menulis ide-ide saja ide-ide saya yang saya miliki tanpa harus ada Uh, karakter atau tanpa harus ada cerita yang sangat jelas, yang penting ditulis saja ide-ide yang muncul, itu adalah sebuah meditasi dalam penulisan saya. Ya, 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 ya. It 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 reminds me of design. I don't know. It's not in writing, but it reminds me of design thinking process that ah. you pour all your ideas and mm-hmm. yeah, just put it all your ideas, yeah. even it makes sense or not, just put That's it all right. and then right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's and right. then you exactly. find, and then you find something interesting. You find yeah. the connection. That's okay. right. And and that's hmm. such an important word. Connections. That that is the most hmm. important word I think in this whole thing. Hmm. You know, hmm. um, you have this idea. You have this idea, right? Yeah. Yeah. You have this idea. You have this idea. You know, all of these ideas, and the story comes from bringing these things together hmm. and and finding the narrative connection between yeah. them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so I think that's really what we're doing is discovering, you know, we're discovering the connections between things, which is mm-hmm. once again about relationship. You know, yeah. it's about the relationships between ideas, between characters, between events. It, uh, that, that's exactly right. Ya. Karena okay. hubungan tuh menjadi sesuatu yang sangat sentral karena dari hubungan-hubungan antara ide ini berkembanglah cerita dan sebuah narasi. Hubungan antara ide dan karakter dan keadaan atau situasi dalam karya ini yang membuatlah narasi dan cerita. Oke. Okay. Uh, so we only have I don't know around 10 minutes left. So I'll so I'll read one last question I guess. So it's from Isna Dihera. So, uh, to plan the plot first, is it a fixed or changeable? Is it mainly based on the character? Make your plot move forward. That's all yeah. questions, I guess. <laughs> no, no, no. This is great. This is you know. This is the real you know. This, this is, is the real, real nitty gritty. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is great okay, questions. Please. Thank you. Okay, so um, there are two kinds of writers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is, I'm, I'm joking here, of course, there's as many kinds of writers as there are writers, but, um, you know, writers like to talk about, you know, I don't, and maybe this is, this is big in America right now, but um, there are the planners, you know, the people who plan and who, you know, who outline and plot and, you know, and then they're, they're the people, they're called the pantsers. Do you know about this? No. Okay, they're pantsers. And pantsers is a kind of slang meaning people who fly by the seat of their pants. Okay. In other words, people who do not plan, plan. right? Okay. People who just jump in and they're just, you know, they're just, there's an expression, an idiomatic expression in English, fly by the seat of their pants. And that's what they're doing, right? Um, and so it's the people who plan and then the people who just don't plan, who just jump in. Right. So you want to translate that first. <laughs> ada banyak jenis penulis, banyaknya ada penulis dan tidak ada kubu tertentu yang um, juga menyampaikan cara menulis itu seperti apa. Tapi kalau di Amerika Serikat tentunya ada um, pada saat ini tentunya ada dua kubu, ada satu yang biasanya merancang ceritanya seperti apa dan ada satu lagi yang dikenalkan dengan pensers atau mereka yang lebih impulsif dan tidak berpatokan kepada uh, terhadap ceritanya sendiri. But actually, I think that what happens is that it's a combination of both, right? And for me, it's definitely a combination of both. Um, 
I, I like, I usually have an idea. Maybe it's a, the voice of a character. It's a line of dialogue. Something will start the process, right? And, um, then, and then, uh, okay, yeah. Dan tentu saja yang saya melakukan adalah kombinasi di antara keduanya itu. Kadang-kadang ada ide dari dialog atau dari suara karakternya, dan dari sanalah saya baru mulai. And after a while, you know, after after, and and so at first I'm not planning. I'm just allowing the voice to take me. I'm exploring the character. Just you know, um, yeah, I'm not planning at all. I'm just completely open and receptive to whatever it is that comes up at the time. Pada awalnya saya tidak merancang ceritanya kan seperti apa. Saya sangat terbuka dan receptif kepada alur ceritanya sendiri dan kepada karakternya. Yeah. But then eventually, of course, I start to have plans, right? I can start to see the shape of a plot kind of emerging. Okay, and and at that point, I start to um, make notes about structure. Okay, but it's not an outline. It's just notes about structure. Uh, baru dari sana saya mulai merancang dan melihat alur ceritanya seperti apa dan di sana saya menulis catatan-catatan dari strukturnya bukan strukturnya sendiri hanya catatan saja. And so little by little, you know, it, and so then the novel is growing longer, right? And and so at some point, you know, there's enough pages so that you start to think, okay, now I need some kind of map. Right, and then I start to make a map of what it is, which looks like an outline. Right, it looks like an outline, just a, a list of, you know, a list of the plot points, a list of the events that have happened so far. Dari catatan-catatan itu, saya baru membuat sebuah peta atau seperti satu daftar. Mungkin nampaknya seperti outline, tapi itulah detail-detail yang penting yang saya gunakan dalam ceritanya atau dalam perkembangan ceritanya. Yeah. And and also in that outline or in that map, um, I, you know, I start to predict the future a little bit, right? So I start to, um, I start to kind of map out where I think I'm heading, right? Where I think the story is going, right? And sometimes it can be, you know, sometimes I feel like I can see right to the end, right? So I'll write all of that down. It's just a, a way of kind of giving me a vague sense of the terrain ahead. Dan dari outline, dari outline atau dari peta itu, saya melihat masa depan dari ceritanya. Kadang-kadang saya juga merasa saya melihat ujung dari atau ujung akhir dari ceritanya itu. Dan di sanalah saya nulis kembali uh, ceritanya dan catatan-catatannya dan lihat apakah itu ujung yang terbaik. But I never get attached to that, right? It's just those are just ideas. It's a very vague map of the future, you know, um, and it's always changeable. And in fact, it does change all the time. So as I'm writing, I'm constantly going back to the map and changing the map, right? It's not like I'm writing according to an outline and obeying the outline. No, it's it's like I'm making a map as I'm walking across the terrain, right? I, I'm kind of mapping my steps as I go. And that's the real difference. Um, then saya tidak, intinya adalah tidak ter, tidak terikat dengan apa yang kita menulis di petanya itu atau di catatan-catatannya itu. Perubahannya itu akan pasti terjadi. Dari proses saya menulis, baru saya mengubah outline atau petanya. Jadi saya merasa bahwa petanya itu dibuat saat saya berjalan. Yeah. And then once I'm finished, once I'm finished with a draft, I have this now an outline of you know, or a map of the entire novel. And then I start to edit. And then in the editing process is where you, uh, is where I um, uh, work on taking out unnecessary things, compressing scenes, you know, doing all of the things that you need to do in order to make a plot move forward quickly, right? So it's, a, it's very much about compressing and editing. For me, usually it's taking things out in order to make the plot move forward more quickly and also about connecting things at the you know at the beginning of the novel with things at the end right so you want to try to make your you know make um, make certain themes or certain you know events kind of run through the whole novel right and and the outline is very helpful for that pada akhirnya baru saya melihat uh, outline atau peta novel saya dan baru saya mulai proses untuk mengedit di sinilah saya bekerja untuk um, mengeluarkan bagian-bagian yang tidak penting demi cerita yang jelas. 
Di sana saya baru lihat benang merah ceritanya seperti apa, menghubungkan awal dari ceritanya atau dari novelnya dan akhir dari novelnya itu agar ceritanya disampaikan dengan jelas. Oke, okay. oke. Okay. Okay. So more like you, you find more? We, you find a way in your journey, right? In yeah. your writing, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, the other thing is that every writer is different too. So you have yeah, to okay. experiment. You have to experiment until you find out what works for you, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Find our find our own style, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we are running off out of time. I think we have to finish the discussion. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I see some several good questions actually. <laughs> but yeah. What well, do you want to do? Yeah. One? <laughs> I'm fine. No, no, but, the one, is, but the comedy say it, it's we have to finish the discussion. Out. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe right. I don't know. Maybe, maybe less, 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 less. I don't know. Less, less words from from you, from you to the aspiring writers here. And as, yeah. As the, well. Yeah. You know, I I think the questions that are coming in are, you know, these are questions, uh, writers' questions, right? Mm-hmm. So so I can tell that the you know that all of you that you out there who are who are um who are listening that you're writers, you know, and and I think you have to believe in that, um and don't get discouraged, you know, it, and do it for the love of it, you know, do the find find a way to make the writing um important for itself, right? I think in Today we get all wrapped up in <clears throat> ideas about publication, and sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's inspiring, you know. But if you start to fixate on that, and and uh, and you know, sort of forget about the writing itself, right? Um, then then you you know you, you're you're focusing on the wrong thing. So just I think focusing just on the process itself. Which is why the process mm-hmm. journal is important, right? The process mm-hmm. of writing. Immerse yourself in that, and and then you know, you'll you'll be writing books. You know, that's how it, that's how it's done. <laughs> Pertanyaan yang disampaikan di sini ya sangat wajar bagi para penulis. Jadi sudah sangat jelas bahwa yang bertanya di sini sesungguhnya adalah penulis. Jadi kalian harus sangat harus percaya diri bahwa kalian adalah penulis dan mencintai prosesnya. Kadang-kadang memikirkan tentang proses publikasi yaitu sangat sulit, tapi kembalilah kepada proses menulisnya itu atau proses berkaryanya. Perjalanannya sendiri itu lebih penting daripada akhirnya. Okay. And, and people don't understand, you know, normal people, normal people don't understand writers, so that's okay. You know, there are enough of us, there are enough of us here in the world, right? Um, so we can understand each other, right? So just you know, support one read, another. Read, yeah, exactly. Just you know, don't get discouraged. Just read a lot of books and realize that every writer, every single writer who's ever written a book is just like you. Okay. Orang pada umumnya pasti tidak mengerti para penulis, tapi tidak usah khawatir. Ada banyak penulis kok yang mengerti kamu. Baca banyak buku dan lihatlah di sana. Hampir setiap penulis tuh punya perjalanan yang sama dan cerita yang sama dengan kamu juga. That's right. You're not alone. <laughs> Kamu tidak sendirian. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, thank you Ruth. Well, what a yeah. lovely discussion. I got uh, we learned a lot of new things. Uh, interesting about your experience so interesting and yeah. So, um, thank you Bagin. and thank you yeah. thank you Bagin, for your wonderful translation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I give it back to Erma. Okay. Or Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ruth. It's such a great session. I also, even though I'm not writers, I also <laughs> learn a lot. <laughs> Maybe you'll become one. <laughs> In the conversation, I might now become um, mm-hmm. writers. I don't know. I need to resign from the festival to become writers. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> But anyway, thank you so much. Um, it's such a great uh, Great evening here in Indonesia, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bagin. Terima kasih atas uh, kolaborasinya. Uh, and thank you, everyone, uh, teman-teman semua dimanapun berada di seluruh Indonesia. Terima kasih telah bergabung malam ini bersama kami. Uh, satelit event masih akan uh, ada lagi. di tanggal 21 bersama Ada Limon 
Dan di tanggal 22 bersama Vincent Bevins, silahkan bagi kalian yang ingin bergabung, uh, informasinya ada di website festival di www.ubudwritersfestival.com. Silahkan uh, langsung menuju ke website untuk informasi uh, tentang dua satellite event lainnya. Uh, so thank you everyone. I guess we should end this meeting tonight. Uh, I'll see you again in the next satellite event. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank Bye. You, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>